Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm Just Cook with Michael. Today, after watching this video, you will know how to make a high hydration bread. I'm gonna include the baker's percentages in the video, but a high hydration bread is just what it's saying. It has a lot of water in it. Quite a few artesian breads are high hydration breads. Sometimes it's harder to work with because of the amount of water, but they turn out really good. You have a really good rise to them, and it's definitely something worth trying. So today I'm gonna use 500 grams of bread flour and some yeast. The way baker's percentages work is you assume the weight of the flour is 100%, and then you'll make your water 75% of that. So for example, this recipe, I'm gonna have 500 grams of flour, 375 grams of water, about 12 and a half grams of salt, about five grams of yeast. It's great when making breads to have a scale because it's much more accurate than weighing it out in cups just because depending on the humidity, depending on how you compress the flour into your cup. And it's so much easier increasing the amount of bread you're making when using met the metric system because it's so much easier just to do the calculations. So here we go. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is take out some of the water to rehydrate the yeast. So I already have my water measured out perfectly, so I don't wanna mess that up by varying the amount of water I'm using to hydrate the yeast. So I'll just take out about a quarter cup of water to rehydrate the yeast. And remember the yeast to be rehydrated should be about 105 degrees. It's great to have this thermometer because when you get start getting above 130, you could kill your yeast. If it gets much below 100, it's gonna take a while to bring your yeast back to life. In the water I'm using to rehydrate the yeast, I'm gonna put a pinch of sugar. That's to give the yeast something to feed upon. This is probably like a 16th of a teaspoon. And I'll check my temperature. See the temperature is 111 degrees. I'll put in my yeast. That usually takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to start bubbling and then you know your yeast is active and you can proceed from there. So I'll set that aside. Now we're gonna auto lease the flour. So in this step, you're just putting in your flour and your water and mixing them together and that's it. And then you're gonna make sure it's incorporated well, stir this up, and then it's going to just sit anywhere from a half hour, you could do as much as three hours. So if you had to run away at this time, you could. And there's no yeast in here yet, there's no salt, it's just the water and flour mixture. And it's good to use your hands, especially, I think the, the less experience you have in bread making, the better it's to use your hands because you get an idea of what the dough feels like at the different stages. And this basically just gives the dough a chance to completely hydrate, you know, because you have all those dry granules of flour in there and those are all getting hydrated. Gluten starts to develop. As soon as water is added to flour, there's two proteins in flour, gliadine and gliadine. And when those two proteins get wet, they come together to form gluten. So just the process of that sitting and resting will develop gluten. So that's it, it definitely feels sticky, which it should. And I'll cover that with a some plastic saran wrap and just let it rest anywhere. I'll probably let it rest from a half hour to an hour and get back to it. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. Our dough has been going through autolyse, which is just water and flour rehydrating together and forming some gluten. It's, it's uh, still very sticky there in the bottom, it's sticking to the bowl, which is fine. We expect that. And now we'll add in our yeast, which has it's definitely very active. It's foaming vigorously in there. And I'll create a little bit of a, a well in this dough and just put that yeast in there. And this is a little bit of a messy procedure here. Again, you can do this in a mixer if you're you know, going somewhere and you don't want to mess up your fingernails. But uh, again, I just think it's good in the beginning just to all those tactile sensations help develop your proficiency in bread making. It will take a little while to incorporate that little bit of water into this dough, but just kind of work on it for maybe like five minutes and it'll come together. And so far I haven't added my salt, so I'll do that now, I'll start incorporating that in. I think it's a really good idea to have everything measured and in front of you, just so you don't leave anything out. You know, have your little workspace, because you don't want to leave out the salt or the yeast or you're not going to get anywhere. This yeast also it is making alcohol, just like yeast does in wine and fermented beverages. Alcohol is being made, but what happens is when you put your bread in the oven, most of the alcohol evaporates because water or alcohol boils, I believe, around 170. 
So because you're cooking your bread closer to like 190 to 200 degrees internally, a lot of that alcohol just evaporates out. So that's starting to come together. There's no more, there's no water that's puddling up. And right now you can see this is just not congruent. This is just like a, and out it's, you know, it's very sticky, but through this process, as we do our folds and our turns, it'll become less sticky. I definitely suggest doing this in a bowl. It makes it a little less messy, but if you do it on a countertop, it's good to have a bench scraper that you could use to scrape it off. Also, later on, you can use this bowl scraper that has the rounded edges to clean the sides of the bowl if you like. From this point on where we added the yeast, about room temperature, so about 70 degrees, you could expect it to take anywhere from three and a half to probably seven hours to rise. So at this point, if you don't have a lot of time or you want it earlier than dinner or it's early dinner, make it to this point where you just added the, the yeast and the salt and then put it in your refrigerator overnight. Because it's cool in your refrigerator, the yeast won't be that active and it'll slowly come together and then the next day, instead of you know taking five hours to proof and rise, it'll probably only take like two. So now I'll cover this up and let it rest 30 minutes. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes since I incorporated the yeast. I'm gonna throw that on the counter there. And from the bottom, just kind of stretching it out and pulling it back over itself. Give it a turn each time. This is kind of developing gluten as you do a few of these turns, you can feel the bread getting, it's, it's harder to stretch it out. And that's what, when you wait 30 minutes to an hour in between these folds, you're letting that gluten relax a little bit. Don't be a slave to the bread, it, it takes a while. You can see, even though this is extremely sticky, this counter is fairly clean, it just pulled, pulled right off. But if it doesn't, one of these big scrapers are really handy. Also, if you wanted to, you could sprinkle just a little bit of flour, but I'd really stay away from adding flour at this point, just because, you know, you do want to keep it a high hydration bread, and if you get tempted to add too much flour and that flour gets absorbed into the bread, you're kind of defeating the purpose. That's it, cover it, wait about another 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, it's been about 40 minutes since my last fold. Another thing that's really helpful whenever baking bread is to keep notes. So to keep notes when you first added the water, when you first added the yeast, normal room temperatures, you're probably talking about four to six hours after adding the yeast until your bread's done. And it already has a different feel to it. I could tell the feels like a little more pillowy, which means the yeast is starting to have some effect. It's starting to air it out just a little bit. I even could see little air bubbles in the yeast dough, it's in the dough itself. Just kind of like fold that over itself, turn, pull from sort of the bottom, pull from the bottom, fold over the top, turn, Pull from the bottom over the top. So you're always folding it over itself. Put that back in the bowl and we'll let it go for about another anywhere from half hour to hour rest and then we'll do the fold and turns again. Okay, the bread definitely looks a little fluffier now. Pull from the bottom, fold over, turn. Pull from the bottom, fold over, pull from the bottom. Each time I do one of these folds, you just can feel the dough getting tighter. Throw that back in our bowl and let it rest for about another hour. All right, it's been about two hours since the last fold. Dough is definitely starting to rise. I turned on my oven just to kind of heat up that area of the kitchen and kind of set this around there. I checked the temperature, it was closer to 80 degrees where my bread was. There's definitely a big difference in how quickly your bread will rise depending on the temperature of your house. So, same thing, get this folded over, fold over, turn. I'll put the stove back in the bowl and let it rest. So last night, after doing a few turns, I had some things come up and I wasn't able to finish the bread. So I put the dough in the refrigerator. So from the time I added the yeast, it had been about five hours and then had some things come up and if something happens like that and you want to keep it overnight, I just threw it in the refrigerator. And again, I think it's just a good idea in general probably to do breads over a two day span. It just makes it easier and you're not in a rush because 
I do believe the, the worst thing you could do is to bake the bread too soon. If you bake it too soon, it's just going to be too dense. If you let it rise properly, that's not going to be the situation. So here is the dough after being in the refrigerator all day, all night. Okay, I pulled this dough out of the refrigerator about a half hour ago. I'm going to check the temperature. It is 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's fairly cool. So it's going to take some time to get that up to temperature. You could put this in a warmer spot in your house or turn on the oven in your kitchen, make that area warmer. But ideally, you want this dough for to get a really good rise. You want your dough temperature to be between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I do have a little flour now I'm going to put on my board. Do one more stretch and folds over itself. Oh, and also checking gluten development. I can see through that now. It's got nice, it's not tearing. See the light coming through as I pull that part now. It just started to tear. So definitely the gluten development is where I want it. Always grabbing it from the bottom and pulling it over itself. So I'll let this rest for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Then I'll do the final shaping and then it'll proof anywhere from an hour to two hours until it doubles in volume and then we'll bake it. All right, my dough has been resting for about 40 minutes. I had it in the oven. Another option you can do if your house isn't warm enough is you, you heat up a pot of water to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, put it in your oven with the light on, and then you put your dough in there also. The heat from the pot of warm water at 95 degrees heats up the interior of your oven and also the having the light on in there. That incandescent light also provides some heat and increases your temperature. So I will again test this to see where we're at now. Before it was like at 53, and now it is at 70 degrees. So it's still a little cool and it makes a huge difference. Sometimes I'll also use a little heat lamp or space heater and just kind of put it near the proofing area just to heat up that area. This feels really good. You know, it's really fluffy. A little bit of flour there. It's still fairly sticky, but again, that's the way it's supposed to be. That looks really good. So here, we're just gonna shape the dough into our final bun shape. I also have this banneton that sometimes I make bread in. You could get these on Amazon. Just for today, you know, since a lot of you may, might not have something like that, just gonna do a, a free form bun shape. So you always work the dough from the top to the bottom. So that bottom, the top has no creases. The bottom is where like all the creases go. And then you could even like pull it towards yourself, almost let the friction form that dough. There's a lot of air pockets in there. It just feels really pillowy soft. So if you have a banneton, you could use one of these. What I'm going to do is kind of make one, a homemade one. So I'm just putting a cloth in there, getting some flour. I'm going to dust the interior of that kind of liberally. Because this is a high hydration bread, they tend to want to like spread out more. So that's the reason of using like a bowl to put it in or a the banneton. This is the top of your bread here. Remember, you're kind of working this towards the bottom. What I'm going to do is put the top down inside my little proofing bowl. And that way, when it's time to go in the oven, you just kind of, you know, so it's going to be like this. The bottom is going to be on the top in here. And when it goes in the oven, you just kind of flip it over onto your cookie sheet pan or baking stone, whatever you're using. So again, I'll put the top down. And now this is the final proofing. It's gonna go anywhere from an hour to two hours until it's about double in volume. And normally I would cover this. I think I'm gonna do a time lapse. That way you could see the proofing over the course of an hour or two. But yeah, normally you would cover it either with another towel or some saran wrap. I'd say a half hour before you're going to cook your bread, you wanna preheat your oven to about 450. All right, it's been about two hours since I put the bread in its final proofing location here inside this bowl. You can see it's risen tremendously, nice and fluffy and airy. In my oven, it's preheated to 450 right now. Also, I have a pan underneath where the rack where I'm gonna put the bread, and that's where I'm gonna splash about a half cup of water in that pan under the bread. What that does is it creates steam in the oven, which gives your bread a more crusty exterior. Almost all professional ovens 
when I went to culinary school, there's a little button next to the oven. You hit that and it actually puts steam into the oven. So this is something that's common in professional kitchens. And this is just a way to do it in your everyday kitchen at home. So again, I have a pan similar to this one in the oven below where I'm gonna put this one. When I put my bread in, I'll splash this in, it'll steam. And for about the first 20 minutes of baking, you want your oven to have some humidity in there to create that final crust. It also, because it prevents it from forming a hard shell right away, allows for the expansion of the bread. So you get a, you get a good rise out of it. Have my pan here, I'll put a little bit of a cooking spray on there. Now I think the best way by far to tell if your bread is done is again using a thermometer. Just about all bread should reach at least 190 as an internal temperature. And most breads like baguettes need to get closer to 200. There you go, this will go right away into the oven. It's only been about 30 seconds since I put in the bread. I forgot to score the top of it. That allows for a better rise and also so the bread will break at a designated spot. So I got my sharpest knife my bony knife very thin, could use a razor blade, and I'm gonna score it really quick. Bread looks great, even smells better. Cooked for about 40 minutes. Again, main thing, cook it to at least 190 internal temperature. This went up to about 205. And I'll just cut into it, show you the crumb inside. I'm just cutting that open, just even, it's slightly warm, but the smell coming out of it. There you go. Fabulous. You can do this, give it a try. Key thing is, especially when going through the proofing process, make sure your dough is in that temperature range of 70 to 80 degrees. I did this overnight, I really suggest doing your bread starting it the day before. So I'm no expert at bread making in culinary school, it's something we really didn't cover in depth. So it's something I'm trying to get better at. This looks fantastic. You could do this, get out there, give it a try. Go out and cook for someone you like.